Sorry, I'm just kind of getting it. Let me, let me, and just be calm. Let me know, because I'm about to hit you with some stuff. <laughs> so let me know. Let me know when you're ready. All right. Um, let me make sure my background is good. Okay. I think we're recording. I'm ready. Um, I'm just going to answer these to the best of however I can think of. So I'm totally not you know, prepare for what you got for me, but I'm a, uh, I'm gonna go with it. So. All right. So like I said, yeah, you, yeah, you two family, they have questions. They have asked you multiple questions and instead of just commenting, you know, uh, on YouTube, I, I said, you know what, let's go ahead and let's put together a legacy studios Q and a. All right. Okay. Let's do so it. This is, this is all. This is all about Paul the fifth. The fifth. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, what that's what it's all about. That name, that's a strong name, Paul. All right. So um, how you feeling today, brother? Man, I'm good, you know. So it's the 26th. So I left this morning in Indiana about eight o'clock because I had to turn in a rental vehicle by noon. So I got here just fine, but I'm good. It's been a great day. Good, good weekend of family and just fellowship and just good time so i'm glad we can connect virtually like very this. good very good this is a good thing i'm loving the shirt man i'm loving the merch you yeah know, I, my merch is over there you know i got matter of fact i got my merch right here you know and i will be rocking my merch also He's so got it. And then you're gonna have some better merch too some more some more different type of merch coming on you know so it'll be a really really good thing for sure. I've teamed up with another, uh, I got a new partnership with another company. So we're going to have not only hats, we're going to have shirts, uh, probably going to do like ink pens, uh, keychains, all kinds of little trinkets, you know, maybe little sticky notes, stuff like that. So that way we can get some of that stuff away to, to some of the folks that are watching, you know, just as a token of appreciation. Very good. Well, I know people are waiting right now. They like, man, ITT, go ahead and get to the questions because we want to know about your boy, Paul the Fifth. So let's go ahead and dive deep. And if it's some questions, guys, he doesn't know these questions at all. So he's not prepared for this, okay? I created these questions myself, so it may take him off guard a little bit. And if it's a question that's too personal, Paul, you don't have to answer that question, okay? All right, cool, let's go. Let the games begin, my boy. Let's do it. All right. So here we go. Question number one. And I'm reading off my iPad. So this is like my teleprompter, y'all. So yeah. question number one, what made you want to create a YouTube page? Could you elaborate on that for me? Yeah, for sure. So I actually wanted to start doing this in 2017. I was going to school at uh, SAE here in Nashville. And I was like, man, I'm learning, I'm loving it, and I want to share what I know with everybody that's out there that's watching. Well, you know, life happens. You got to pay bills, student loans, car note, all that stuff. I didn't have cameras. I didn't have lighting. So it's taken me, what, three years to get to this point, to get a solid space a good quiet area, a uh, good camera system, good lighting for all this. But I wanted to share my knowledge of music production, mistakes that I've made, mm -hmm. uh, things that I've mm -hmm. learned along the way to help other people that want to learn how to do this in this time. Like if you're stuck at home and you don't know what to do, you have a question, hey, you know, you Google something, look in the SEO, Hey, Paul V, hopefully it's going to pop up and you'll be able to get that answer for, for your music production questions and tips. Okay, okay. Now, tell me this, though. Were you just, like, really serious about YouTube when you got started or were you playing around and just doing your own <laughs> thing? Now, are your, are your endeavors a little bit more heightened or what? Okay, so he got some jabs there because uh, this is a good question, though. <laughs> I like it because so back in March of this year, I started doing like these little short films and TikTok videos of just like goofy little stuff. And I started doing this thing called like 
uh, five things in five minutes and, you know, just five things about me. And I started doing these little vlogs. I started doing stuff from my closet. So then I just started doing these little things like on my phone and I would use this app called Anchor uh, for these like podcasts. And I started doing some of those and then my insurance job kicked in full force. And then like, I got so busy with that. I kind of just focused on that for like March until October or sometime. And then I was just like, I saw what you were doing. And I'm like, man, this dude's got a, he's a little fire underneath me. And I'm like, man, I got to step it up. And then I had a video that I made actually two years ago. I think it was a Michael Jackson cover, um, just some funny stuff. And ever since then, I just started really honing in. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I sent him a text, y'all. His It looked like it's a little fuzzy, so we're going to try to get it a little bit clearer here, guys. That better? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, like the last month and a half, I've really honed in and focused really on this a lot. And it's been right. a lot of fun, a lot of learning. Very good. So let's move on to the uh, question two here. All right. All right. So what sparked your interest in starting your own studio? Man, ever since I was a kid. So long answer for this. When I was 12, my dad had bought this keyboard, a full digital keyboard. I think it was like 66 keys. And that was when I first got my hands-on experience with like writing music and like recording and then like mixing stuff and putting it together and making it sound really good and so i was 12 and i was like man this is so much fun i want to do this when i grow up as a living and so i told myself i said i don't know how but one day i'm gonna end up being a musician somehow and then i was like all right cool so, you know, you and I have talked about this, you know, setting our destiny. And I started that when I was 12 years old. And then, manifest. Yep. for sure. And, you know, 28 years later, here I am. But I also said, I had, I felt like I had this calling to get out of Southern Indiana and to move here to the, the Nashville area. I've always wanted to get into the CCM industry and community, which is the Christian uh, contemporary music uh, scene, doing live sound stuff. And I realized that that was not where I belonged. I got here and I realized that the studio was my niche. And the last three years, I've really been able to like focus in on this. And then in 2019, okay. the start of the year, the church I was going to called The Hills here in Nashville, we had a series called Legacy. And we're talking about what are we going to do as a church for the city? What are we as individuals going to do for the city? What are we going to do when we're gone? When our time is up on this planet, how are we right. going to remember? So I was like, you know what? What legacy? Right. Yes. So I was like, for me, my legacy is loving on people, helping them. Legacy with, studios. Yes. Making those <laughs> dreams that they have, what they got in their heart, what's up in here. And we're taking all that and we're hitting yeah. that R button and we're putting that to, you know, digital formats. And we're going to be doing also video now. I've teamed up with a guy named Mark Ali of Ali Visuals. So now we're not only doing music, but we're doing like visuals to go with that. Very good. All right. All right. I like that. I like that. And everybody, I hope y'all still tuned in. We got some more juicy questions. I, I, I got the juicy questions. Yeah, All right, here yeah, we go. Got the juice. <laughs> here go the next one. What is your favorite music software? Favorite music software. So it honestly depends on what I'm doing. Uh, as far you mean as like the genre of music? Yes, exactly. So okay, what if it's rap or hip hop? Okay. So for the hip hop genre, that market, I use mainly Logic, uh, Apple's Logic Pro, uh, just because when it comes to using MIDI, uh, musical instrument digital interface, it's just seamless. You plug in, you plug and play, and you're ready to go. 
Uh, it's an easier format for me just to work with as far as my workflow. I do use Pro Tools. The new version now is like Pro Tools 2020.12, I believe. So I got that. Okay. I, I like that more so working with live instrumentation as far as like, mm -hmm. like a real bass guitar, real drums, acoustic guitar, vocals. I really like it for that because that platform seems to be, I mean, it's the industry standard. But for me, it just seems to work better for that. And then I like mixing things better in Logic, exporting those files. And I've got a better workflow in Logic. Very good. Very good. I'm going to move right along. That was a good answer there. All right, let's see the next one here. Here we go. Who is your favorite artist, singer and rapper? Oh, man. So, like, <laughs> that's hard because... All right, so let's say favorite singer. So I don't know if you guys can see these. Oh, but yeah. This is Zozo, and these are all a combination of a band called Led Zeppelin from, like, the 60s and 70s. Yeah. So when I was 12, when my dad got that keyboard, my cousin was like, hey, man, check out this new band and I'm like okay and they have this song called Moby Dick and there's like like this kick drum was going and there's like a bass guitar like going and um and then there's another song I call Cashmere and uh Diddy or whatever he calls himself these days um Combs you know Puffy he did uh his rendition of it for the Godzilla movie and I did a TikTok video about that too <laughs> <laughs> okay. And anyhow, Zeppelin would have to be my favorite band probably of all time between them and like Jimi Hendrix because they were so, from what they had back in the day of the 60s and 70s, they took their platform from here to here. You know, they were just doing stuff that was outrageous, outlandish for the time. And gosh, my favorite rapper right now. I would have to say See, I don't even I don't even know this answer. I don't know this answer, so I want to know. Well, my favorite rapper of all time is no longer with us. And that I think I know who it is. Yeah. So this fella has gone by multiple names. Uh Tupac Shakur. You also know it. him as Machiavelli. I and knew it. Just I can't explain it. Just like from the moment I heard All Eyes on Me in 1996, I was like, California love. I mean, yeah. what? Brenda's got, a, Brenda's got a baby. Brenda's that got That was so epic. That yeah. was deep. And then um, the way, I think it was called The Way It Is, or he used a sample from The yep. Way It Is. That's the way it is. The morning, yeah. You know, my yep. stomach's hungry. Yeah. I mean, that was 100% raw and real of what. Yep people like us face and yep. you know them connecting with uh dre and snoop and death row records and all that stuff i mean and then you know the the, the biggie disc i hated that you know you had your east and west coast fuse but yeah you know i fucked your bitch you fat motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> you know him and faith get money yeah. get money <laughs> and you know, that was a part of my childhood growing up. And okay. you don't have hip hop and stuff like that today. I don't feel like. Right. Um, yeah. It's most, the music now is most definitely, definitely different. Let me get to this next question for you. Okay. Uh, and this is, this is a personal question. So you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but I thought I, you know, you know, so this one right here says, Tell us more about you being adopted and the dynamics thereof. I, um, I think it's important to share the diversity. Some people may not think that that's important, but I think that's extremely port important to bridge the gap of humanity. So could you elaborate on that, please? Yeah, for sure. This can be, so much stuff comes to mind with this. So I'll try to keep it you know, you, you could summarize it. I got more questions. <laughs> okay. So to go back, you know, I just turned 40. So I was adopted at two and a half uh, from 
an area called Bombay, uh, which is now known as Mumbai in India. I remember coming over and just having an awesome childhood, just like anybody else, you know, loving, caring parents, you know, birthday two weeks before Christmas. That was amazing. Just learning good work ethic. My, you know, my dad had a business. My mom worked in education, learning all that stuff, uh, learning how to be self-sufficient. Uh, I didn't realize I was different, you know, until I was probably in eighth grade. I remember I was okay. shopping and I'm like, it hit me. I saw this other family and I'm like, I don't look like him and his mother. But then I was like, you know, I'm a teenager. I'm, I'm, I'm learning who I am. My body's changing. I'm like, what the right. heck is going on? And then for about from eighth grade until sophomore year of high school, I was like trying to figure myself out and who I was. And I was listening to all this different music. Like I was telling you, like Led Zeppelin. And I started to listen to like the hip hop stuff and R&B. And then when I was a sophomore is when I kind of changed my group. I became, I wasn't so much the band nerd anymore. I, yeah. Positive. All the fifth was emerging <laughs> and I didn't even know about this until <laughs> probably 12 years later, but I started getting into different groups. I became, you know, I was, I was, I was running track. I was doing all these sports and I'm just like, I'm blending all these people together because I'm not just a band nerd. I'm the cool kid now. And I'm sitting at the popular table. I got all these girls hitting me up. <laughs> and it's just like, I was just that guy that was different, but I could take this group here. I could take people from this group. I could take these guys down here. I could take the handicapped kid and the guy with a cleft lip. And I could take the jocks that I would hang out with and be like, guys, hey, I'm a band nerd. I play band. I'm not going to deny it. But at the same time, I do sports. So, hey, how about my band friends and my jock friends? How about we get some lunch or dinner? We all go out and do what whatever we do. Let's go to a football game together. And so I've always been that person to bridge these gaps because of my very good. differences. Very good. Very good. And as far as differences, this is something that I know that I think that's important for your YouTube family to know is that you are, you were, and still are chocolate in a sea of vanilla. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful because it's diversity where you had a Caucasian mom, a Caucasian dad, family members, and you're this chocolate Indian guy in the family, but they still embrace you as family. That right there is huge. It's profusely huge. And I think that's something to capitalize on and to talk about, especially in this age that we're in right now, where there's so many racial issues and things like that. When you tell that story and you tell it for what it is, it starts to do what I call bridging the gap of humanity. So I wanted to kind of really focus on that because I think that's extremely, extremely important for them to know if that was okay with you. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, like you just said, um, so I was, you know, born in Mumbai in this, and then I was in an orphanage and I was adopted here uh, and I came over at two and a half, but just that was the norm for me. I, I didn't know. Right. I'm just, yep. I'm just a kid growing up. I don't yep. understand racial differences until like I was just right. telling a minute ago until I was in yeah. eighth grade. Yeah. Um, nothing was hidden. They, you know, my, my family has always been very open-minded, uh, accepting. I mean, of course, if they weren't accepting, I, I wouldn't have been adopted, you know, but uh, because of that, I got to meet um, so many other types of backgrounds. So we were in this group is a multi-ethnic group that we would go to like once a month. Uh, people from Asia, there were some uh, mostly Asian, uh, Chinese, uh, Indian folks of background. And I got to, I get to, got to know these folks because my parents wanted me to still kind of get an idea of my heritage and background. Not really understanding that I was different until like eighth grade. I just grew up 
as a kid being me. Um, yeah. And then once I realized I was different, it was a big deal because I was like, I don't, I was like, I don't fit in. Where do I fit in? Who, I was like, yeah. who am I? I was like, why is this happening? Why am I just now understanding it? Yeah. Uh, but to answer your question in multiple ways, you know, as far as relationships, being the chocolate guy, um, yeah. all of my relationships have been with, you know, caramel, chocolate honeys, and- Some vanilla ones too, some fine vanilla ones. <laughs> you know, I, I don't discriminate. I love women. <laughs> you know, and, but I have, you know, this is not about me and my dating history, but I have, I've gotten, my eyes have been open to having this background I've been, my eyes have been open to different cultures, uh, how Very they good. do things. You know, you're, you're one of my best friends. And, you know, you helped me when I was at my worst. And now he's lifting me up and I'm like solid and on my feet. But another great friend of mine was like his family is from New Zealand. I mean, they took me mm -hmm. in and I got to learn like some of their uh, culinary uh, dishes, some of their traditions i got to know just how they did things so i feel like me being different and getting to know all these people from all these different backgrounds has really molded me uh into and especially as a musician there's not just one type of music you know you may have like you know i live in the hispanic neighborhood i feel comfortable those are my people i love them and so you have that type of music. You've got your pop music. You've got your hip hop. You've got your rock and roll. You know, we're in Nashville. We're in the music capital of the world and everything's got to be diverse. So just like me and my background, getting to know all these people, I've just opened myself to so many things and, you know, culinary dishes, just all kinds of stuff. And then I just realized that as an individual in the music, seen today you can't just be stuck on one thing i mean you can right. do it really well but you have to like capitalize on all this out there it will most definitely be more money that can be made most yeah. definitely yes you know so very good and i'm glad you answered that i think i think i think they wanted to know about that so and then um we're gonna move on here and we're getting close to the end right here i'm gonna do what i call the quick questions okay, okay. you ready what you got all right. So I got a couple of quick questions and then I'm going to hit you with one that's going to be pretty deep. So uh, quick question number one, skinny girls or thick girls? Oh, man, skinny. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a short dude. Not that I'm hating on the thick women. They thick women need love, too. <laughs> but I'm a skinny dude. And if I had a thick girl, she would just... <laughs> paper rock scissors you would just demolish me <laughs> all right quick question number two jordans or vans uh i'm a vans guy damn daniel back with the vans once again <laughs> all right i got another one for you and this and this is the, I, I guess this is considered a quick question what's your favorite food oh my gosh um chinese okay and then also pc or mac Mac all the way, no hesitation. What's your reasons for that? Uh, platform, everything just works. Uh, virus control. Right now we're doing this on, well, this is my old MacBook Pro. I just got the new one out of the box last night. I'm getting everything set up. I got my Mac mini. So keeping everything, I don't have my watch on, it's dead, but keeping everything in sync. You know, you and I are becoming so busy right now uh i have to look at my calendar for everything my macs keep me organized they keep all my stuff running they're fast they're efficient they're smooth they're quiet and uh portable i mean i can take my new mac mini from the studio to anywhere i could come to your house track you remotely same thing with all these uh just is that the is, I'm sorry, is that the Mac that you said that that one may be a gift for the YouTube fans? Is uh, that a possibility? Nah. Well, that 
I'm not giving away any Macs, but we are doing the uh, iPad, the 10.2 inch still. That's still going on. There so, we go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, that all right for sure. Perfect. And then I got your final question here. All okay. right. Where do you want to see yourself five years from now? I am going to be in the next five years. Speak it into existence, Paul. Speak it into existence. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be, you often refer to me as, as yay, but I, I love his production processes. So combination of that, uh, definitely one of my favorite producers, Scott Storch, Rick Rubin. And I want to be the it guy, the go-to guy, whether it be here in Nashville or, you know, while we're in this COVID season, who knows how long this is going to last. You know, email me your stuff. We'll do some consultations. We'll do some Zoom calls. You know, I'll email it to you. We'll take notes. I want to be the it guy for your productions. And not only that, I want to be, uh, I want to dive into like video and film too. So I partnered up with Mark for that. So we're doing not only music, but we'll be able to help you shoot your, like your EPKs. We'll be doing, you know, all things digital and audio. So websites, video clips, full on videos. We'll be setting up your uh, website, helping you get your music put up there, press kits, all that kind of stuff, helping you get everything released to the best format for you whether it be, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. We want to be the guys that you come to for any of your music production needs. That's where I'm going to be. Very good. And you'll also have, like, music for sale too, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, this concludes our interview of Paul the Fifth. And hopefully it would – yes. Hopefully it was informative for you all. Um, and like, you know, if it's any other little questions you want to squeeze through, you know, in the comment section on his page, please do so. Um, it's all about Paul the fifth today. So, uh, congratulations, my friend, you made it, you made it pass all my questions. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, your help in letting me learn about YouTube and all this stuff. And, you know, it's been great to partner up to, to do videos and, you know, everybody, we've got a ton more. We're going to be going to the Franklin Car Show. Yep. New Year's starting up. They're going to be doing that once a month. We'll be there. Uh, yep. We've got more tutorials, the rig rundown. We're teaming up for more giveaways, including shirts, garb, hats, all that stuff. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming up in 2021. A lot of juicy stuff. It's not about me right now. It's about you, brother. And I appreciate your friendship, and I appreciate your time on this Zoom call. We're going to wrap it up. That's it, guys. Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah.